Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today we are talking about Mr. Rune, or Runic, now known in the TCG as the official name. Uh, we've known it for a couple of weeks, but whatever. Runic, very, very interesting new archetype that is entirely spell-based in the main deck. And um, we talked about Sky Strikers being really weird when they came out because they only had one main deck monster to work around. But now we have Mr. Rune, or Runic, which literally has zero monsters in the main deck. Very unique deck. Uh, it also has a lot of tools built for milling your opponent out although i don't think that's really like a legitimate win condition you go for it can still be a nice bonus um depending on the situation so very very cool today i'm going to show you four builds four things that you can combine runic with um to try and play the deck um in a more competitive fashion um i just don't think the deck necessarily is strong enough on its own because if you play it on its own you probably have to go for a mill win condition and, and i just think it takes too long i think too many decks are going to be able to get to you break through your your recursion um after long enough and you're not going to be able to deck them out long enough so i don't think a pure version works but i do think there are a handful of ways you can combine this with something else to kind of make something um you know that that really complements each other nicely so four builds let's get into this thing starting off with number one it's the most disgusting one on the list for sure uh it, it, it's mystic mine uh and i hate this um you know we are supposed to be expecting a ban list sooner rather than later i don't know when we'll get it but you know it, we're in a weird spot uh, just because Sprite and Tear are so new and now they're the best decks in the game, so I don't think they're going to get hit. But if we do get one, I think the number one hit everybody's going to be looking at is Mystic Mind, potentially. Um, so if Mystic Mind does get hit, uh, this doesn't really exist anymore. Um, but for right now, I mean, yeah, I think this becomes arguably the most splashable assisting engine to Mystic Mind. I think the only thing I would really argue uh, as far as... Um, as far as how these combine together is that you really like your runic field spell it's an insane card it's probably the best card in the deck and but you also want to make use of, of mystic mine at the same time so you can't have two field spells up that's kind of the weird part but as long as you work around that you can you essentially have a mill win condition that is much better than most of the other like burn win conditions we've seen in the past from like pure mystic mine builds and uh, i think that's pretty sweet uh, I wouldn't expect to go into the extra deck very often in this deck either, just because um, <clears throat> you put a monster on the field, like how do you clear it? Um, although theoretically, you know, in a specific scenario, you could summon one, at, like attack into something to clear it, and then, you know, put your opponent under Mystic Mind, whatever. Um, I like that these cards inherently play going second. The best ones are like Tip, because it searches any of the others. Uh, flashing Fire just uh, destroys a special summon monster. Um, freezing Curse uh, negates any monster in the field. And then Runic Destruction just pops a back row. So really solid utility there. Some of the other ones are just more mill cards more than anything. But those are the three main or four main ones, I would say, for the quick plays. Um, that really have you, give you good coverage and help you just play going second as a Mystic Mind deck to bait interruptions, bait negations that you can resolve your mind in the first place. Um, I wouldn't focus too much on like the specifics of like how like what's in my build here. To be honest, uh, these were thrown together pretty quickly. We're more so focusing on just like the like the overall idea of the build itself, not necessarily on the exact card choices I have here. I definitely would sit down and spend more time on these. So. Moving on to the next one, uh, we have Runic Sprite. This is probably the most competitive version, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this actually sees some traction here. Um, the really cool thing is that your main extra deck monster, so if you don't know all the quick play spells, do one thing. Uh, like I said, pop a back row, negate a monster, or pop a monster, or search for like the quick plays. But their second effect says you can choose to also, instead of uh, do the first effect, just summon one of their fusions straight out of the, the extra deck into the extra monster zone. And their main one is actually Huggin'. She gets you the field spell, which is why any quick play spell with a discard gets you to the field spell so that you can start rotating, getting a ton of draws. Uh, but it's also level two, and that's the really cool part of it. All of these essentially become e tellies for a level two. Um, that means without your normal summon, you're able to put twos on board to open up for the rest of the splite engine to start extending and go off from there. I'm not playing Diva or Beaver or anything in here. You definitely could if you want to play more normal summons. That's up to you. I just think with all the runics also being extenders, I don't think you need to force feed more potential bricketry by drawing like too many normal summons or anything into the deck. I think this feels pretty good. I mean, basic sprite engine here, basic frog package there. 
Uh, and then you get to the runic stuff, all standard there. These are just the best ones, the one fountain, and then three of the, the four best ones. Prosperity, you know, Dark Ruler, Enemy Controller now in the deck. Um, and Reborn called, like, everything else. Everything pretty much seems to fit. I don't even know what the last card I put in the extra is. Um, but whatever, you know, obviously that's that's not the important part. But really, really cool idea just because, uh, yeah, their main monsters are two. I like that you don't have to force it. They have three extra deck monsters, but you don't have to force, like, bad ones into the EMZ just to open up your sprite plays. This is already the best one that gets you the field spell, which you want to get to every duel if you can. And then it just happens to be two. So, like, not only is it just the best one, but it, it opens up for the sprites as well. Very cool. Very cool idea. Definitely um, definitely like that one. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, moving on from there, we move to the third option here, which is Sky Striker. Uh, I think this one makes a lot of sense. Uh, I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video how Mist Mr. Rune or Runic kind of has a similar feel to Sky Striker. You have a lot of these, like, quick play spells that, you know, are really good at interacting into a board. Um, <clears throat> but we're not like, you know, um, but I don't know, we're not as fragile as you might think being built around like not even one monster, but actually no monsters. Um, but it's pretty cool. So the idea here is you have the strikers, right? So, um, with the strikers, they kind of have the other backbone of the deck. Um, the only downside with them is that like they do want to make link ones, which does take up your EMZ. So they definitely keep you off of once you have like gotten into the striker monsters, uh, keep you off of ever really wanting to go for the um, fusions off of these. The other thing would be like extra deck space. I know normally in strikers you have to play a lot of striker links, so you only end up with like usually like four or five extra deck slots for like the lap for like open stuff once you play once you look at the striker stuff um and you want to play two to three at least of the uh, runic cards so it's it's kind it can be kind of awkward and hard to kind of figure out what your what lineup you want to go for there but still really cool I, I think it fits enough um you're just going all in on the grind like you're you're going to grind really hard you're going to try and get control of the board and then you're just going to out resource your opponent um, one thing I didn't mention before is like the biggest downside of Runic that I, I literally haven't talked to, I haven't mentioned it all yet in this video, is that once any of the quick play Runic cards are activated, you lose your next battle phase, you skip it. Um, and so what that makes, that drawback kind of makes it so that Runic can be really, really good at like getting advantage and taking control of the board at some point um, and just out resourcing your opponent. But it's, it's kind of hard to kill your opponent because as long as they keep forcing you to defend yourself with quick plays, you skip your battle phase. Then you skip your next battle phase. Then you skip your next battle phase. And you literally just like can struggle to get to a point where you actually can go for game. And even more so in a striker build, um, you know, this deck is not known for killing anyway. So even if you are able to get control of the board, like you're not really OTKing all that often with strikers, hardly ever. It also conflicts with Hayate. So there's some weird stuff there. But I don't know. It, it's cool. And I do play Mystic Mind in here. One more interaction with the Mystic Mind that I didn't mention before is a lot of decks will just play like a couple outs to Mystic Mind. When you look at like tier elements right now, they just have like the Galaxy Cyclone. So the idea with the Runics too is that if you're firing them off, banishing cards from your opponent's deck, you have the opportunity to just like randomly hit like a Galaxy Cyclone. And if that's the only out they have in their main deck to Mystic Mind and they were you know, banking on eventually milling it or eventually drawing it, whatever, um, you can potentially just hit their out before they ever get to see it and just win the duel out right that way. So that also pairs really nicely with mine as far as like the engine goes, that bonus, as well as just the fact that you could hit a, an engine piece, you know, a, a combo engine where they need like a one-off card that's like really important, but you just hit that one-off card uh, when you banish off the top of their deck. Now it's not in the deck and now they just like straight up can't do the combo they wanted to do, or at least it lowers the ceiling a lot more because they needed that combo piece. Um, so there's definitely some cool aspects there that can definitely, uh, you can definitely cheese some wins that way just by a lucky banish off your opponent's deck, which, uh, you can never overlook. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a bonus. There can definitely be downsides to it because some decks can make use of stuff that is banished, but generally it's going to be a positive for you. And looking at the last build here, the coolest one, in my opinion, that I think has like the most synergy overall is definitely Musketeers. I think this deck is really sweet. I think this becomes like the best way to play Musketeers. Maybe not the best way to play Runics, but the best way to play Musketeers for sure. 
Um, we have been waiting for an engine like this for so long for Musketeers. Like a very hell heavy based um, spell engine that can fire on turn one to trigger your Musketeers, right? Because otherwise, before you just had to play your Desires and 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 Upstart Goblin and like I would even I even messed around with like Instant Fusion just for the possibility of like just another spell that could at least trigger your Musketeers turn one. Um, but now we look at this. I still think this is like really sweet deck. I think this deck is really cool because I think it can go first okay. Not amazing, but okay. And I think it can go second pretty dang well. I think that's going to be its sweet spot. Um, <clears throat> we've already got stuff like Dark Ruler, which pairs really nicely with the muskets. Being able to normal summon one and then just fire a Dark Ruler. Negate a whole board and then just search. And now their board's negated, so you can probably just make max and just like go off on them. You're not going to deal them a ton of damage, but you're going to get a ton of advantage and probably just pick their board apart with stuff like Desperado and um, you know your other Runic cards if you could get access to them, which is which is really sweet. So um, really really cool. I, I love this. I think the one downside to this deck is uh, always been the downside to Magical Musketeers, to be honest, which is. Um, the monsters are okay if you see them without the musket cards, but the muskets are just straight up dead. And we play nine of them in the list. They are completely dead if you can't if you do not see them with a musketeer. Um, which is why, like, if I could give musketeers any card, I would give them like an E Telius card. A way that without your normal summon to just like get a musketeer out of the deck. It can be negated, whatever, I don't care. As long as it's like as long as it like puts a name on the board, that's really all I care about. Because then it just it adds consistency, it'd be an extender, whatever, uh, and you'd be able to go off from there. Um, I don't even care if it had like a brutal, brutal like restriction on it. We just would want consistency, to be honest. And a card like that would be so nice for consistency and being able to like push through interruption. I still wouldn't be mad at a Rota because it means we could cut down on like hard copies of the monsters in the main, but still, I'm not complaining. But really, really cool deck. I, I love the way it rotates. Again, not a deck that's going to kill your opponent outright anyway, so this deck was never concerned about OTKing, so I don't think it really... Um, not never OTKing, but like super often and quickly. Uh, so I don't think it's that big of a deal that Runics keep you from OTKing for a couple turns. Um, I just think the synergy here is like really cool. I like that they kind of do the same thing. They put these quick play spells in your hand and they kind of work like hand traps, uh, essentially. Or, well, they more so, they're like the power of trap cards, but they sit in the hand. So siding becomes very weird for the matchup because it, it just becomes stuff like, oh, like you're kind of playing this like a controly back row deck, but that means my lightning storms don't really do anything because everything's in your hand. Same thing with evenly matched, everything's in your hand. What do I do now to like play into you? It becomes very awkward for certain matchups for sure, which is really cool. So um, yeah, those are, those are the four builds. Uh, I think this deck is really sweet. Uh, I already ordered the cards. Luckily, apparently, some stuff is happening and they're getting hyped like right now on release and they, they've been going up a little bit. Um, so keep an eye on that because um, I got them at a pretty dang good price, I think, as nobody was expecting them to do anything. I thought they could do something. I just didn't know how much. Seems like they're doing okay. It's probably the sprite build, most likely, that's pushing them in terms of hype, but whatever for whatever reason they're uh, they're going up but yeah um i'm out of here for today guys thank you so much for watching as always stay tuned for more stuff from me down the line subscribe to the channel if you want to see more things from me in the future and i'll uh i'll see you in the next video peace